this goes any slower, I'm going to actually log into Netflix and maybe watch a quick movie. go move this guy into the app data folder, the database I created a while ago. Refresh it. Alright. And now I'm good to go. I'm going to create um, two pages just. All right, at least right now. I'm going to create a listing page. Since we only have one user, I'm going to create a listing page, and then I'm going to create a add to queue page. So when I click on the title of the movie, it takes me to a, do you want to add this movie to, uh, to the queue page. All right. Um, so I'm going to do that, and um, as far as looking to see if it successfully got added to the queue, we will just go and look in the database. And, and see, since it's pretty straightforward. We only have the one user and, and six movies. So let's go and let's create a list of movies. configure the SQL data source. We pick that. Next, save it as connection string. That'll work. And I want to see all the movies. All right. I'll create a grid view then to display those movies. Let's go and edit columns. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to create a hyperlink field. Oops. The data text field is going to be the title. The data navigate URL fields. I'm going to do something a little different just for the heck of it. I'm going to pass the movie ID and the title, all right, just for, just for laughs, all right. And not that it's particularly funny, but you get the idea. Movie ID, title. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to put in my data navigate URL format, add.aspx movie ID equals curly bracket zero ampersand title equals curly bracket one curly bracket. Let's go and look at this now. Make sure it does what we expected it to. It 
should show my six movies if I look closer at the link. It should be passing the ID and the title as part of the query string. All right, here we go. And if I look down on the query string, it is in fact passing add.aspx movie one title Star Wars one. Movie ID six, Star Wars six. I haven't created the ad page yet, so um, you know, doesn't you know if I click on it, nothing's gonna happen. It just gives me an error. All right. Questions about this so far? Should be old hat about the only thing I did differently was I passed two values on the query string instead of one. Only reason I'm doing that is because then I don't have to re-query the database to, um, to, uh, to pull up the name. If all I'm going to do on this page is pull up the name, then so be it. In a more real application, if I was really creating Netflix, I'd probably just pass the ID. When I got to the second page, I'd look up all of the movie information, who was in it, what the reviews were, who the, you know, uh, and, and comments that people had, and display that on a page, and then have an add button. But I thought just for laughs it would be good to show how we can pass more than one field on it and how we can use it. All right. Let's go and let's create our second page then, which will be our ad page. Now, what's going to be on this page? Really, two things are going to be on this page. A label that says, do you want to add to your queue? So I'll put a label in there. And there'll be a button that says, go ahead and add it. So let's go and change that to say add. Let's go and remove the text for this. Now I'm going to want to set that text to be what I, what, what I pass for the title on the query string, right? So let's go and do that in the onload event. Or page load event. I want to say label one text equals Do you want to add request dot query string? All right. Now again, let's make sure that this still works. Always believe in doing just a piece at a time. Believe me, this is exactly if I was coding this. If there was not an audience here, this is exactly how I would code it. All right. Um, 
for one thing, it's just nice to be able to, to, to take a break and know that you have something wrapped up. All right, even if it's something very minimal. It, it, you know, the, the toughest thing as a developer, I think sometimes is to, like when you leave something hanging that you have to come back to later, you know, it's best to have a clean stop and say, okay, it works up to this point, you know, I'll go and do the hard part tomorrow. But at least I got the easy part done. So let's go and click that. All right. So I click on Star Wars 4. Do you want to add Star Wars 4 to Q? All right. Click add, nothing happens, but there we go. All right. So, what we want to do now is I want to code the button. All right. Let's imagine where, we, where we're going to get these values from. All right. And again, we're going to have to sort of fake parts of this at first. But that's okay, because eventually we'll come around and we'll do all of this for real. All right? The user ID. Right now I'm going to hard code it at 1. Right? Because I only have one user and their user ID is 1. All right? When we actually have a login, we'll log in and it will remember the user ID in a session variable. And then we'll use the session variable. But for now we're going to hard code it as 1. All right? So that's the user ID. The movie ID, where are we getting that from? Query from the query string. All right, so we got the movie ID. That comes from the query string. And the position in the queue, eventually we're going to calculate that. But right now, I'm just going to add it with a position of 1. All right, so everyone's going to have, every movie's going to have a position of 1. All right, so I know that's not correct, but we'll fix it. All right. Remember, it doesn't have to be correct today. It just has to be correct by the time we release this. So let's go in here and let's put some code on the button click event. All right. So there's our code for the on click event. What I can do is I can then create some of these things programmatically. You will be quizzed, by the way, on the video that they're watching next door. <laughs> is creating a SQL data source object. All right. Remember, we're still using the same objects and classes, or the use of same classes is probably a better way to put it, that the framework uses. We're just taking control in our own hands. And we're going to write the code that does everything and, and links everything together and all that. We now need to connect to that database. And again, as you can see, I pulled my notes over. So this is something that I wouldn't expect you to memorize.
about config file. Let's. My IntelliSense is telling me something's wrong. realize that that's a mouthful, all right? This is why it's in my notes. Of course, the VB version's in my notes. That's why I had to wing it, all right? What is this telling us? Well, this is the name of the object that I'm using, the configuration manager. The configuration manager allows us to pull values out of the web config file, all right? Now, if you notice before the name of configuration manager, which is the class name, there is the word system.configure. That is what's called the namespace of that class. All right? Now, what I can do, I can either import that namespace or I can just put the full name in. You know, think of that, again, as kind of being like with tables and columns. This is sort of the full name of that class. The class is preceded by a namespace. So I can either put an import statement at the top of my code, or I can just put in the full class name. Now, in the interest of time, I just put in the full class name. So what this does is this is accessing the built-in class of Configuration Manager. The configuration manager is what allows us to pull certain things out of the web config file. What do I want to pull out of the web config file? I want to pull out information from my connection string. And in this case, I call the connection string connection string. Maybe that wasn't the best idea. All right? But that is whatever name that you've given the connection string. In essence, what I'm doing is I'm pulling it from here. Here's a confection, con, excuse me, confection, right. The connection strings section of the web config file. I want to pull out the connection that has a name of connection string, and I want to pull out the provider name. Two pieces that are needed to access the database are the provider name and the connection string. And both of them are stored in the connection strings section of the web config file. So, in essence, this line of code says look in the web config file Look in the connection string, I must be hungry, connection string section. Look for the connection string called connection string and grab the provider name. 
So that dot notation is effectively parsing that XML. This points to the web config file. This pulls out, this goes to the connection string section. This pulls out that particular connection string, and that pulls out the provider name. The square brackets are used instead of the parentheses because effectively what we're doing is we're pulling into an array. That connection strings section of this config file really is a list of connection strings. And we have to specify, like we do with an array, which member of that list we want. Well, we want the one that's called connection string. VB actually is different than the rest of the world, those of you that have done VB, in the sense that it uses parentheses both to indicate function calls and to indicate arrays. All right? Here, um, at least I believe that's what VB does. Here, since this is an array, effectively an array, we use the square parentheses. Now we're going to do the exact same thing except with the connection string attribute. instructions that we need to connect to the database. All right. This is effectively what you do when you go through the GUI, right? And you click on things and say, I want to connect to this database. But we're not going through the GUI for this. We're programmatically doing it, so we have to put these instructions in. I now have to say what my insert statement looks like. really should be parameters, right? We should be pulling the user ID from a session variable that remembers who logged in. We should pull the movie ID from the queue. And we should pull the position from counting how many, mo how many movies a person already has. We're only going to do one of those three things right now. We'll do the other two later. All right? So I'm going to go in. And hard code one for the movie ID. I'm sorry, for the user ID. I'm going to put a parameter in for the movie ID. And I'm going to put one in for the position. So right now, as we're developing this, I'm assuming that it's user ID one. And it's going to put every movie in position one. And we'll fix that later. All right. Now I have my insert statement. And right now it only has one parameter. I have to define that parameter, where it's getting the values from. All right. These are the things that the grid view and details view do for you. All right. But we're not using a grid view and details view, so we have to do it ourselves. So I need to say objds. Insert parameters and 
movie ID comma. Then I need to pull from the query string the movie ID. How do I refer to that? Request query string movie ID. So what I'm doing is I'm filling in that parameter. Right? right now I only have one parameter because we're faking the other two. We're faking the user ID and we're faking the position. But I still have that one parameter, the movie ID. We have to say where we're getting that movie ID from. Where are we getting the movie ID? We're getting it from the query string variable that is called movie ID. Alright? So now, we should be ready to go. And we can go and execute the insert. This probably seems harder than it is. All right? Because the first two lines of code are ugly. But you don't really have to remember those, right? You just simply have to know to substitute in your connection string. What do you need to know? You need to know what the insert statement looks like. And you need to know what parameters you're going to pass it, uh, that insert statement and where you're going to get the values of those parameters from. All right. Now, we're also not doing any error checking. All right. And that's a problem as well. And we'll probably address that next time. All right. Let's run this and see if it works. Let's go and run. All right, we'll pick Star Wars 4. Do I want to add Star Wars 4 to the queue? I'll click Add. All right. Ooh. Blew up. All Syntax error. Insert into queue. Let's make sure I have all my table names and all that correct. So now insert into Q. figure this out. Here's how we're going to figure this out. We are going to go Alright, that part's correct. I thought maybe one of these is a text field. I'm going to go in to create a query try to execute it this way. Sometimes when you ac ac access or execute things in access, 